Hey everybody, this is Tim with the University of Vinyl. Thank you for tuning in again today. Uh, today's topic, I want to take another look. Uh, I did a video, I looked it up, it was about five months ago and it's called Intensity. One of the featured artists um, in that video was the guitarist Robert Quine. Now, Robert Quine I recently, uh, what what is spurning this video on? I recently, you know, Robert Quine had a very kind of close relationship with Matthew Sweet. He played on um, the incredible kind of first breakout album, which was Girlfriend, um, followed up by Altered Beast, and then 1995's 100% uh, Fun. Uh, this is an original pressing. Uh, sounds quite good. I know Intervention uh, put out a copy of this as well. I don't have that, so I haven't been able to compare. But Robert Quine, let's get back to Robert Quine. And this guy is a really interesting kind of case study because... He eventually hooked up with Lou Reed and was featured on The Blue Mask. He was part of the four-piece band on that album. Uh, and then he also uh, went on and played with Lou uh, on a kind of a, well, I don't think it was a world tour. They, they, they did a European tour and a short U.S. tour in 1983, 1984. So I jumped around a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning with Robert Quine. Robert Quine, um, I believe he was from the St. Louis area, and uh, he was a law student, eventually graduated. I think he went to school in Indiana, and relocated to San Francisco. Now, he was enamored with the Velvet Underground. And he went to several shows in 1969 uh, at two different clubs in San Francisco. One was The Matrix, which was in Cow Hollow. Um, it's kind of interesting. The club was actually started by uh, Marty Balin and a couple other uh, associates. This was in the heady days, the very beginning uh, days of the uh, Jefferson Airplane. And the Matrix became a popular club. It was a tiny little storefront um, that you could cram about 100, maybe 120 people into. And um, there are a couple very, very famous uh, Velvet Underground releases that uh, were taken from taped concerts at the Matrix. One of those is uh, a, a famous bootleg known as the Quine Tapes. Robert Quine uh, had tape, uh, tape recording uh, gear with him and taped several shows uh, at the Matrix. The second venue in San Francisco uh, where those 1969 shows happened uh, was the Family Dog. There was also an official release of the Matrix tapes, known as the Matrix, the complete Matrix tapes, I believe. And I think they actually took uh, soundboard uh, recordings um, from the kind of primitive uh, setup uh, that they had um, at that point in time in 1969. But famously, Robert Quine was enamored with the Velvet Underground. He looked up to Lou Reed as a hero of his, uh, you know, in addition to uh, Lightning Hopkins, uh, he eventually got into jazz big time. So uh, all of the changes that Miles Davis was going through in the late 1960s into the 70s. Um, also a fan of Thelonious Monk. So um, a pretty interesting character. He always appeared uh, in concert, kind of uh, buttoned up, you know, wearing a blue blazer. Always had the dark shades on. While in California, Robert Quine failed the bar exam and kind of lost interest in becoming an attorney and, and practicing law. He made his way to New York City in 1971 
and took a job with uh, Prentice Hill Publishing and um, actually worked on, uh, you know, writing some books and editing and things like that in the publishing business. Mm -hmm. And there is unfortunately not a ton of footage of uh, Robert Quine live, but there is an amazing clip of him uh, performing the solos as they as he did on the record of uh, of Matthew Sweet's girlfriend. <laughs> This is the 1991 Girlfriend album that really kind of, um, this is when I discovered Robert Quine. I could not believe <laughs> the guitars on this album. I mean, this is a power pop masterpiece. I love Matthew Sweet. I love that string of albums, uh, starting with this one. And Robert Quine was on all three of those. You know, partially he, he played along with uh, Richard Lloyd. They weren't always on the same track or tracks, um, but man, the the sound on these albums are incredible. Uh, the guitars were mixed up well up in the mix, and Robert Quine has a very very idiosyncratic individual style that is instantly recognizable once you hear some of his riffing, some of his soloing. Uh, legend has it he never played the same solo twice. Um, the solos on uh, on Girlfriend, the single, uh, is actually a composite of several takes, uh, but a frenetic energy. He, an amazing and enthralling guitar player. So that's where I first kind of learned about um, Robert Quine and. Uh, this, by the way, is the Intervention uh, double LP release um, that really stretches these songs out, gives them lots of space to breathe. Incredible soundstage. If you, uh, if you want this album in its best format, look for that Intervention uh, reissue that came out several years ago now. So after hearing um, Robert Quine on that, Girlfriend album by Matthew Sweet. I started to work my way backwards years ago now, and I knew uh, I had heard of the uh, the Voidoids and Richard Hell. Didn't know a ton about them, but finally, eventually, uh, picked up um, a pretty well done reissue. Uh, this is still in print, still available. Uh, this was on a translucent blue vinyl. Um, this is one of the punk masterpieces of the late 1970s, 1977. These guys were playing at CBGB's, uh, Sylvia Reed brought Lou Reed into the club to see Robert Quine because, uh, Lou was planning, uh, always planning, you know, plotting out what his next move would be as, as, as far as solo albums were concerned in the 1970s. Um, after marrying uh, Sylvia, his wife, uh, and during that time period, Lou became kind of very content, very domesticated. Um, gone were the, the late night, you know, haunts into Manhattan, doing who knows what and, and with whom. Um, he actually bought a house in uh, suburban New Jersey. They also had um, a place in the West Village. Uh, but Lou uh, put together a new band and it would feature Robert Klein on guitar. So Robert Klein came full circle. He had a buddy who was a pretty good uh, drummer um, uh, named Fred Marr who... Uh, basically was taken into uh, the fold as far as Lou was concerned as well. 
Uh, and then the fantastic bass player, Fernando Saunders. All of these guys uh, worked with Lou on the Blue Mask album. This is interesting. This is the Transformer album image that was on the cover, but they've kind of put a filter on things, and it's got that deep blue-black look to it. An amazing album released in 1982. Um, reading interviews with Robert Quine at the time, Lou Reed gave the band members um, a cassette tape of him doing rough demos of all the songs on an acoustic guitar. And what an album it was. You've got Average, you've got average Guy on here, uh, The Heroine, uh, The Day John F. Kennedy Died is an amazing song. But the, the, the standout track on here as far as the guitar playing is Robert Quine's soloing on Waves of Fear. Just a frenetic energy. It's kind of a, one of the harder edged songs on this album. Um, you have to hear it if you haven't heard it before. There's a great uh, concert video. Uh, I think it was, it was filmed in 1983 or 84 uh, you can find entire shows on YouTube um, and and the interplay between Lou Reed and Robert Robert Quine is quite interesting now Robert Quine went on to play on Legendary Hearts the follow-up album uh, that was the album they had uh, I Love You Suzanne on it if you're not familiar with it a pretty well-reviewed uh, album the follow-up uh, to the Blue Mask. It's kind of interesting the relationship between Lou Reed and Robert Quine. When Robert Quine joined the band um, and before recording The Blue Mask, he insisted that Lou play guitar as well. Lou had stopped playing guitar on the previous couple albums um, and was, you know, relying on Steve Hunter and others um, to kind of fill fulfill those duties for him. But Robert Quine remembered the Velvet Underground days. Lou Reed is a great rhythm guitar player, kind of a rudimentary lead guitar player as well. He's got a singular style. But Quine insisted that Lou Reed play guitar and got Lou to play guitar on the album. That basically gave Lou some confidence and he started, you know, all of the, the fantastic reviews that were coming in for the Blue Mask were mentioning the guitar sound and particularly the soloing and chops uh, that Robert Quine had on the album. Now, I've read a, a, a Lou Reed biography um, and apparently Reed was getting annoyed at the attention uh, on Robert Quine. So... What happened at the next recording sessions um, for Legendary Hearts, uh, Lou started to kind of, in the final mix of the album, so Lou Reed basically mixed down Quine's contributions to the Legendary Hearts album, and Quine kind of said that was, that was it with working with Lou. So Robert Quine kind of, rinsed his hands of Lou and moved on to more session work. He eventually did a couple albums, I think, with Fred Marr, the drummer in the band, in the Lou Reed band, um, which are really hard to find, not easy to track down. Um, and then, you know, 1991 comes along and he hooks up with uh, Matthew Sweet. Matthew Sweet had hired Fred Marr to produce the album for him. And along with uh, Robert Quine on guitar, Lloyd Cole also played some rhythm guitar and backing vocals on that album, um, as well as the fantastic guitarist Richard Lloyd. Robert Quine was an in-demand session player uh, throughout the 90s. Unfortunately, his wife died in... 2003 or 2004 and Robert Quine succumbed to a heroin, a heroin overdose uh, in 2004. So. An uncompromising 
and edgy guitar player, totally edgy. Uh, listen to some of the work that he left behind on some of those albums I mentioned, and you will open your mind and enjoy um, pure intensity uh, as far as guitar playing is, is concerned. So R.I.P. Robert Quine, thank you for the music. Uh, that is today's video. Um, you never know what, where you're going to get an idea from. I just happened to find this, this copy of this Matthew Sweet album that uh, back in the day in 1995, I bought on CD and listened to that thing incessantly. I was a big Matthew Sweet fan, still am. Um, he's still doing live shows out there and um, I think would be fun to catch sometime. And I know he's done a bunch of work with um, Susanna Hoffs as well. They've done at least two cover albums, uh, which are really amazing uh, if, you've, uh, if you know of those. But that's Matthew Sweet. Maybe we have to do a, a, a Matthew Sweet video sometime. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. I'll be back soon. Hope you have a great day.